most people. This little scene of bare knuckle brutality would be enough to call the police. But to my people, it's all part of the sweet sketch of life. So Ben, this is your directorial debut, so this must be a very exciting time for you. It is, absolutely, yeah. I'm, I'm really excited that the film's here uh, as part of uh, Buff 2013. So, um, one of the documentaries that you made, Nuestro Abuelo, um, is built around um, the Mexican tribes and with this story about gypsies, it also feels tribal. Yes. So, what is it about that kind of um, genre that, uh, that appeals to you, really? I know, I've always been fascinated about different people from different places and um, I've been fortunate that some of my previous work has involved, as you say, uh, different people from different tribes uh, with Nestor Abuelo, which was quite, quite an amazing experience, being in one of the most remote areas of Mexico uh, with this, this incredible tribe. And prior to that, I did a film in India about an Indian nomadic tribe called the Nihang. So I'm always sort of drawn to, to people from different places who are sort of outside of the mainstream society. I think that is, is something that is, is very um, interesting to me. You know, one of the themes that runs throughout the, this film as well is spirituality. Is that yeah. something also that it interests you? Absolutely, yeah. I, I, I sort of see myself as a, as a spiritual person and um, that was something that I wanted to draw out of the script and something that was important to me, you know, because there's a lot of action and, and drama in, in the film Traveller. Um, and some big set pieces, but it's important to have bring out the spiritual, spiritual side of it all. And with particularly the character that Khan Bonfils plays, Tolway, who's the Mongolian horse trainer, all everything around that character and the horses and the gypsy life is of uh, a spiritual nature. And um, you're working with. Uh with well, there's, there's Owen, the, the young boy, and, and also Blackberry. Um, father and son in real life, what was it like directing both of those? Yeah, it was really a uh, good experience, and um, a bit for, for Billy, it was his, his first film, and um, we were lucky enough to have quite a bit of time working with beforehand doing character development work, which is something that I like to do with my films. And uh, Billy was, you know, raw talent, and, and you know, on that. I keep saying on that, that first week, if you didn't step up to the plate, we've all had to pack up and go home. Um, and then him and his dad working together, well, David being a, an old hand. And, but I think, you know, on that, the, the first scene that they did together, Billy was a, a little bit nervous. Um, but it was, uh, it came, you know, it, it worked very well. And, uh and also, that what, what struck me as well when I saw the film is how cinematic it is, so that clearly was very important to you as well. Absolutely, yeah, we worked really hard with my cinematographer on making it look really beautiful. You know, we didn't want to do um, something that was sort of handheld and, and, and grainy, we wanted to make it look very beautiful and, and, and cinematic and taking the landscapes down in Dorset that we were, because we had some great locations. So yeah, we worked really hard on that. And I'm a half-breed. More of a gorger than a gypsy to them. But I keep having to come back. Blackberries live the life. And uh, being a traveller, it's not easy. And uh, I suppose in a way, it's the patriarch of, of the gypsy community there. He's a horse dealer. I really enjoy doing it. And uh, uh, it was great to work with my son, a privilege, Billy. Unbelievable. Um, Sadly, I don't have too many scenes with him, but it, it, it was nice to, to watch him and see how truthful he is as an actor. I enjoyed it. So uh, I, I think it's very credible. It's full of travellers. It's called Traveller. Uh, it's, it's an insight really into English travellers to a certain extent. And all these uh, various adventures happen to a boy who's half gypsy and half non-gypsy. And it's really him trying to find himself uh, his respect for his heritage, then, then all these other things happen. So uh, it's a very interesting, powerful film. Uh, I wrote the music for it, which I enjoyed doing. I haven't done a film score since um, Silver Dream Racer, I think, in, in uh, the 80s. That, that one did very well. So th the soundtrack of this is coming out soon on Universal. And, uh, you know, hopefully people will enjoy it. Uh, I enjoyed making it. It was good fun. Well, with regard 
regards to um, you being a performer in the film and, and writing the score, it's quite a unique, um, we don't see that very often actually. So which came first for you? Was it the, the acting role or, or did it all come together? Uh, well, with this, you obviously have to wait till the film's finished. Then, then, then you write the music to it. So the acting came first. But in my life, I mean, music is where I came from, and uh, it was really ironic that a piece of theatre playing Jesus in Godspell gave me the springboard to go back to music after spending years sort of starving in various attics playing blues music. Uh, I went back to music, wrote rock on that, went to number one worldwide. So you had. I've been very lucky because I seem to be able to work in various mediums and that for me is great because a change is a stimulant. There's no pride in being courted. Pride! Is that what you want? Pride leads to prejudice, you know, Owen. Sometimes life just happens and there's fuck all you can do about it. So John, you wrote the, the original book, so what is it about the, the gypsy story that you wanted to tell? Yes, it is. I, I wrote the original novel, which was called Tribe, uh, about 13 years ago now. And um, it's, it's about a, a, a boy who is half gypsy and half gorger, which is half settled person. And he doesn't know really where his identity lies. And th that's what the whole story is about. Um, and then we turn it into a screenplay and now it's a film. But we're, we're bringing out a new edition of the book. The, the book is out of print now, but we're bringing out a new edition which has been edited, updated, and it's called Traveller to coincide with the film. And when the general release of the film comes, the book will come out as well. So when you, when you wrote the screenplay, obviously you've got to reduce it down to, I think it, this is 140 pages. Well, so it's, it's about a minute a page. Uh, uh, yeah, so we, we, I, I, the, the original screenplay was about 110 pages long. But in the edit, then afterwards, it's probably reduced even more. Yeah. And um, we, we've got a we've got a thriller in this as well, haven't we? Yeah. So, what was it important for you to, to obviously to tell the story of the gypsies, but also to interlace this this kind of who done it? Really? Sure. Yeah. Because you've got to have a film that the audience uh, want to see, and you've got to have a hook, and you've got to have climax to it. You, you know the way a screenplay is written, and you've got to have ten poles and everything else like that. So there's a gangster element in it, and. Uh, the, 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 the gypsy boy, his friend, is a demolitions man and he falls foul of a, of a local firm of gangsters who are very vicious and he ropes Owen in to help him and then it all goes tits up and he goes on the run and Owen has to go on the run and he's only got one place to go and that's back to the gypsies and he, uh, he kind of has a little bit of a soft spot for a policewoman and that's really, really... Um, Kind of strange, where you've got a gypsy boy and a police woman falling in love. So you've got that element. You've got a love story in there as well. You know. One of the lines that, that comes from Blackberry is uh, um, a life without gypsies is a life without freedom. Yeah. Um, what it seems so relevant, really. Uh, what was it that you wanted to say about? Well, actually, I didn't write that line. David Essex wrote that line. I I didn't want him to put it in, but he insisted. <laughs> You know, a land without gypsies is a land without freedom. It's a very, very restrictive times we live in. Uh, there's cameras watching everything. No, you, you know, everybody, it's health and safety, left, right and centre. So uh, those days of freedom have, to a certain extent, got smaller. Um, but I think that's probably right, yeah, a land without gypsies is a land without freedom. I'll tell you where that line came from. That line came from his grandmother. And he, he, David's grandmother, that's what she always used to say. And it came to him while we were making the film. And he said, I've got to get that line in somewhere. I said, well, it's not in the script. But he said, I'm putting it in anyway. So we had to let him put it in. And he did. And, it, and it's good. It's cool. This pikey is making himself very bloody conspicuous. We're looking for a traveller. Well, you come to the right place. <laughs> <laughs> regards to the music, you've got um, the, the, the old kind of gypsy traditional music also um, threaded through it as well as electronic music and for me watching the film gave me a sense of history of the gypsies but also made this story very contemporary. Was that your intention? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I, I drew on uh, sort of Celtic motifs which are recurring themes. But when it comes to bank raids and things like that, you know, you, uh, you have a responsibility, I think, 
as a composer to try and underscore the drama and the you know the the uh, the things that are going on so when, when I when I did use digital sounds as such it was for a specific reason it was uh, hopefully to enhance the drama of, of what was going on but the general motif is uh, a sort of Celtic motif I think well, do you know Edwin he's out there somewhere is it a gypsy camp? I know it. As far as empires are concerned, this is about to get personal. It has so many facets to the story, not just you know like the thriller aspect, but very much an emotional, uh, dramatic journey. And which attracted me to the film was the fact that it portrays gypsies and their traveler community in a good light, and shows the soft side and how they're very spiritual in their own right, as opposed to just you know fights and you know kind of the stereotype of what we normally see on television. It was interesting that you, you mentioned television because obviously uh, from a producer's perspective we see, we're see we seeing a lot about the gypsy communities at, at the moment so does that help make the, the film potentially more marketable because there is uh, an audience for, for knowing more about the gypsy community? Uh, I think definitely so. People are very intrigued about the community of travellers and gypsies and what they see on TV they always want to know more like you know what's so exciting about them so it definitely attracts more audience to the film. And um, when I was talking to Ben earlier on he mentioned the lo locations and shooting in Dorset. Um, it almost feels like the location is a character in the film as well doesn't it? Actually it is. Our um, executive producer is here today who's the location owner and he's a traveller. So it was very authentic. So we had, uh, we had, you know, we had the ability to film everything on a real gypsy farm. So it was real, hor real wild horses. The people were all authentic, and he advised us on, you know, making sure everything was real. The gypsy cards, the people. So that made it so much more real, as opposed to, you know, like the TV shows, which are very fabricated. Yeah. And it must be quite a privilege because, again, what comes um, out through the film is what a private community of people they are. So to be accepted to, to, to come and film is, is, is quite a privilege. Isn't it? Definitely. I think otherwise, if it wasn't for you know being involved so directly with that community, they wouldn't let us in. They wouldn't give us access to their lives. They, you know, they were such welcoming people. We went into their homes, and at the end of the film, I feel like they're my family as well. And people don't see that side unless you, they really accept you in and, and you know, spend time with them. I was born gypsy. So long live traveller.